All right, and welcome to this uh, D2L with Dave and Paul webinar series, uh, session number six. I apologize for the late start time. Again, we had some technical difficulties and this will be uh, recorded and sent out to everyone afterwards in case you couldn't access it. Um, we are encouraging everyone to log into Brightspace uh, using the link below or on the public board website, scrolling all the way down to the D2L Brightspace icon at the bottom and logging in and then uh, jumping into the D2L with Dave teacher course. And that's just so you can follow around, uh, play around, go in and try things as we're showing them to you or when we give you demo time. So today we are here to talk about teaching languages and the arts in Brightspace. Um, we know that the subject specific questions are always coming up and so we wanna be able to address those. Um, so I have uh, Paul with me today. He's been our co-host this entire time. He has some expertise in English, so he's going to be doing predominantly most of the presenting today. Uh, my name is Dave Gomes. I'm going to throw on my webcam for you just for a quick second. And as you know, I'm our technology-enabled learning and teaching contact for the board, um, liaison with the Ministry of Education uh, for e-learning and D2L. And again, you know Paul Lonke, he is one of the special assignment literacy teachers, English department head at Essex, and uh, he's been an e-learning teacher for the past three years. So he brings a wealth of experience and knowledge to this topic about teaching English online. So we're very thankful for uh, having him leading this today. Uh, today we're gonna be doing it, sorry. You're too kind. Uh, I try, but that's the only way I can get people to help me do work, right? Um, so today we're going to be uh, doing a lot of Q&A. We want to get your feedback as to what your needs are and uh, just to know how we can best support you. So we'll be doing some demos based on what your needs are uh, with the Q&A. And uh, if, again, if you do have questions afterwards that we need to answer separately, we can always do that. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do that I'd like to ask in the chat pod, if you can open up the chat to the left, is what do you do in a regular classroom that you would like to learn how to replicate online? What are those things that you do in a classroom that you'd like to learn to replicate online? I'll just give you a minute or two to, to type those things in. Don't feel bad if you're copying someone else's answer. So if multiple people want discussion, feel free to put that in. But what other things that you do in a regular classroom do you want to be able to do online? I feel like I should have had some Jeopardy music going. There we go. Okay. Got some interaction, discussions, small groups, writing tasks, group work, scene work. Okay. Good. Uh, live writing as well. Yeah, live nice. writing, think, pair, share. Yep. So a lot of strategies, and hopefully some of the things that we have prepared already will hit some of those. Um, and in some oral interaction, good. Uh, so yeah, I think that some of the stuff that we have prepared already should meet the needs of, of some of those things. And then others will will kind of circle back and hit near the end. Uh, so I think that'll work for us. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of people talking about oral interaction, uh, class interaction, group discussions. I think with this group, that's going to be a big deal. Um, getting students talking to each other face to face and all the challenges online that we have there. Yeah, and that goes all, also back to this idea of synchronous versus asynchronous learning, right? So what are the synchronous opportunities that we can have? But knowing that sometimes for certain students, synchronous isn't going to be an option. So then how do we still do those you know, oral interaction pieces with other students or with the teacher when it's asynchronous? Because we can do all of that. So hopefully we'll be able to cover all of that for you today. And uh, if not, we can answer questions afterwards. So I'm going to move on to question number two that we have for you. But before I do that, I just want to make you aware, if uh, if you've missed our sessions in the past, we did cover these sessions already. Um, you can put in bit.ly slash D2L with Dave case sensitive, uh, either 1, 2A, 2B, 3, or 4 into a web browser and basically get to those recordings. Uh, so when we talk about certain things like um, using the discussion board, uh, I would suggest going and watching, you know, session number three, because we might not have all the time to, to outline that today. Okay. So, um, 
question number two that I have, and I'm going to toggle on the multi-user mode so you can select uh, on the screen, just like I can select right now, uh, what or who your favorite musician is here. So just use your cursor, go over top. Do you like Beyonce, Stevie Wonder, Aretha Franklin, or Drake? OK, no right or wrong answer. Yeah, Just another way of showing um, how you can survey a class and quickly get class feedback on any number of things. All right, so we'll go into our next question then. We're going to do this three times. That's our first question. Next question. Paul, if you want to lead this. Sure, yeah, choose your favorite. We have four books there, so uh, choose which one you like. OK, so we had a music question. And we had a writing question. What's next? Of course, we have French teachers today, so we have to have French stuff. So Celine Dion, Hercule Poirot, Leonard Cohen, and La Bonhomme de Neige, your favorite. Dave is very much into the Bonhomme de Neige. <laughs> very much so. All right, so I'm going to turn off the multi-user mode. This is just something that uh, you can do inside virtual classroom, which just so you know, we are inside of Brightspace's virtual classroom. Uh, so if you're worried or if you're wondering what is this thing called Bongo, um, this is the ministry provided virtual classroom, which is the web conferencing software, and it's accessible right through Brightspace. So that's what we're in today. So if we're, if we're talking about virtual classroom, this is what we're referring to. We're in it right now. Now, many of you don't have the toolbar that we have right now on the side where you know you, you can put in text or you can put in shapes or uh, you, you know you can see my cursor right now. Um, but multi-user mode is one of those modes we can turn on at any time and see where everyone's cursor is and then turn off. So if you're looking to do those quick feedback items, they're more than easy to do. Okay. So uh, Paul, where are we headed first? So we, we saw a lot of the different uh, things that people were wanting to do. Um, are you thinking something on um, the like think alouds or? Uh, yeah, we could do think alouds. I did see a lot about group work, collaboration and discussion. So I wanna make sure that we uh, talk about that for some time. Okay. Sure. So why don't we go into this first and I'm going to give you the presenter privileges now. Okay. So that you can, oh. I just removed Paul. <laughs> oh, that's that's really embarrassing. Uh, I had his name and I clicked remove as opposed to that. So he's gonna have to come back in. Um, but anyways, I'll, I guess I'll demo uh, what this was at first. So his idea is just the one common thing we're doing all the time as teachers is think alouds, uh, but using annotation online for that too. Uh, so modeling a skill as an expert and making the thought process explicit. Um, and so this could I'm be, oh, good. Finally, uh, Josh wants to know if I sent you to the office. I had your name on and I, I instead of clicking uh, make presenter, I selected remove user. So, okay, well, embarrassing. I'll, I'll fill in a troublesome report and I'll, uh, I will, you know, follow up with next steps to see what I can do to make this better in the future. I apologize. <laughs> Okay, um, so can I make myself a presenter now? All right, yes, yeah. great. Okay, um, so think aloud is something that um, I, I like to use in my practice. I think it's a valuable thing, um, and I don't want to review too much what Dave has just said, but uh, we're modeling the thought process that goes behind an expert performing a skill. Um, and that's something that's really valuable in a number of different uh, scenarios. Um, and online, the big challenge is that um, your face and your voice, um, plus the annotations on a page, um, is shown to really increase student engagement and really um, get them thinking about what you're trying to get them thinking about. Um, so I want to demonstrate a couple of pretty easy ways that you can uh, model, uh, think aloud um, using annotations um, in that. And I'm not going to take us through the examples in too much detail, just to show you the tools that are available here. Um, so you can uh, put up an image and you can uh, draw over top of that. Uh, you can put up video, uh, writing, reading, all kinds of things. Um, 
If you're doing a synchronous lesson, uh, you can use virtual classroom and then there are the tools in there. If you're doing asynchronous, uh, you can also do things uh, through content, announcements, discussions using video note or in Brightspace Capture. There are lots of ways that you can put up a text and then add annotations on top of that while you're speaking. So to show you what I'm talking about, I'm going to back up to, oh. All right, so if I'm an art teacher, maybe I wanna put up an image and I wanna get uh, students discussing. So uh, maybe I would, first thing I would ask is, what do you notice about this picture? And maybe I would have students in the chat pod uh, sort of talking about you know, what they notice and then start the discussion there. Um, and then we can get ourselves looking at little details there. Um, so there are lots of different kinds of annotations that I can do. Um, there are texts. I can add a text box and I can type text. And I can do that in a number of different colors. Um, and I can draw lines. Yep, and everyone else can point out things. I can ask the students to uh, say, what do you see? Where does your eye go on this image? Um, and you can show some of that, I see here. Sorry, I'm just trying to get out. Uh, then there, are, we also have a pencil tool um, and maybe a student is talking about, you know, wondering what kind of bird this is up here, and we can talk about that. Um, who are these people and, and what are they talking about? So you can have different kinds of annotations there. You can talk about the shadows or you can uh, talk about sort of the direction of the eye movement through the painting and different things like that. So um, as an art teacher, you can have a discussion with students uh, while annotating a text in that way. Um, you can also do it with language um, as a writer or as a teacher of uh, reading, um, I might have an excerpt of a text and I put that up and I want the students to discuss that. So the same thing here, I might put that up um, and then have asked the students, what do you notice? And depending on what my purpose is at the time, um, I might uh, just let the students uh, decide what they want to talk about in that text. I might have them looking for figurative language. There are some examples in there uh, with the care of a pageant queen and uh, uh, the horses being caught like bugs. Uh, we could have them looking there to try to figure out clues about the point of view, um, who is speaking here and what is the situation. Uh, we could look at the organization. Uh, we could look at connections to other texts. Um, so lots of things we could do. Uh, with this one, I might, wanna, I might ask the students, uh, what visual imagery do you see in here? So if we're gonna focus on just that skill, um, then we could look and we could see um, What's, what kind of visual imagery do we see? Um, does anyone want to jump in the chat pod and mention any visual imagery? I see a tan face. We also have other sensory imagery. I have crackling wood. Oh, pardon my. There. Uh, we have a pointy stick. Um, and then we have the descriptions of the boy's hair. Um, so there are lots of different possibilities that we can have in there. I see shadows. Um, so um, I won't go through the entire text here, but you could have a discussion uh, with the student. We have tendrils. Thank you, Shauna. Spider webs. Um, so we can have the students contributing while we're annotating a text together. Um, and that can be a way to really uh, deepen their understanding while modeling um, the thought process behind it. So that would be think alouds. Okay, where would you like to go next, Dave? Sorry, I was muted. Uh, if you want to go to discussions, then we can probably hit the group work part now, just because of uh, of that piece. So I think those were near the end. There we go. Yeah. There Okay, a number of people were asking questions about group work, collaboration, discussions, and in the classroom, this is very easy, um, but there are a number of different forms these kind of conversations take. Um, and then online, um, I think there are ways that we can do all of these things. They're going to look different, but I think there are ways that we can achieve all of these objectives here. Um, one kind of uh, discussion that we've talked about in the past uh, with some PDs is Socratic circles. Um, this is a favorite of mine. Um, and this is where you get students discussing um, a question, an essential question or a text 
um, and then they're practicing discussing. Um, and in contrast to a debate, a Socratic circle has the students uh, having a cooperative discussion where they're seeking to understand an issue on a deeper level. Um, so if you wanted to do that in an online environment, you could set that up in a way where you have uh, students choosing partners and then they connect with each other using instant messaging and you get them discussing the question or the text and they kind of work out uh, what they want to say. And then you could have a larger discussion where you put the class together um, and that would be in virtual classroom. And then the participants could be discussing um, and then their coaches, their partner could be silent. They'd have their microphone off and they'd have their camera off. They would be observing their partner in the discussion, giving them coaching tips. And then you could pause and they go back to the instant messaging where the coaches meet with their partners and discuss tips about how they can have a, a better discussion um, and then uh, put them back into the discussion and then they switch roles. So that's uh, one way that uh, that's something that we do in the classroom can be done online as well. So after the partners have switched and coached each other, then they debrief and reflect on um, how they can improve their participation. So Socratic circles is one way that can be done. Uh, jigsaw groups is another thing that we like to do in the classroom. There's lots of value in this, but it seems like uh, something that might be difficult to do online, uh, but it can be done. So um, what you could do is place students into discussion groups. Um, so this is something that can be done. And uh, maybe Dave, would you like to go in and demo kind of quickly how uh, how we can create discussion groups? Yep, absolutely. Um, I'm just gonna steal the presenter. So what we're doing here is uh, you're gonna put students into small group um, and that could be based on their interests or it could be based on uh, who you've handpicked uh, that you think is gonna work best in a group together for whatever other reasons you have for your learners. Um, you can put them into groups um, and then have them discussing questions and then we'll show you how they can report back to another group. Yeah, absolutely. So the first thing you would do in your course, you would head to this course admin icon in the nav bar. And this brings up a bunch of the different icons that you can use. There's an option under learner management called groups. And when you select groups, what you can do here is you can either create a new category or just the groups themselves. Um, categories could be for something like if we wanted to do something with uh, jigsaw groups, so I'll call it jigsaw, and maybe you wanna change up your groups for different units, so I'm gonna call it jigsaw unit one. Um, and then I have the option to change the type of groups that I want. So there's either groups of, you know, groups of a certain number, so I can put groups of five, or I could just have, well, I'm gonna have seven groups, right? Depending on what the, what the task is, what your goal for it is. And then you can either manually distribute the students or have students, um, you can do auto enrollments or you can have students self enroll into those different uh, groups. So if I had a number of groups self enroll, I want seven groups and students can self enroll into those groups, great. If I want them to be just groups of five, and I want to, uh, I can just go through here and I auto enroll new users and I randomize users in groups. I'm good. This is where I can set up a discussion area. So if I just check off, set up discussion area, then it'll create a new topic or I can attach to an existing uh, question that I already have in discussions and I just select save. And then that's, that's basically how you would create those groups. And then it would run you through what you'd need to create. So this is the actual discussion now that I'd be creating. So if I just go create and next, and you can do some of those things, select done. Now, if I were to go into the discussions, you'd actually be able to see that discussion that is, where are they? Right here, that jigsaw unit one group discussion, and you can see there's group and section restrictions. So when I go into that discussion, then it would end up showing each group would have their own discussion area. So, but the groups don't know that other groups exist. So the groups will only see the posts from members in their own group. And so it's it's private in, in that sense. And then afterwards you can um, you can have those people share back to a, maybe a, a, an entire class uh, discussion or something like that. But that's a group set up. Or you could bring them all back into the virtual classroom and then uh, you, they could each elect a spokesperson uh, to yeah. speak to the full class. Yeah, absolutely. But that's how you would create groups. Um, so it's just from course admin and then groups, and you can create your new groups. Nice.
Okay. Um, what else? What would you like to speak about next, everybody? Um, portfolios. Um, this is something that uh, in arts and languages is an important tool. Um, uh, there is a built-in tool, a portfolio tool in Brightspace. There's an app. If you have the mobile app Pulse, um, you can also add evidence to it that way uh, pretty easily for the students. They can upload files of all different types um, and record them and tag them. Uh, one thing that's really handy as a teacher is that you can tag the portfolio evidence by overall expectation, which is really nice. Um, I was doing this with the Writer's Craft course. Um, so the final project was a portfolio and it was very nice to, to have all that work collected and polished in one area that I could look at. The students could curate the collection, then I could look at it uh, when I was looking at their final assessment. Um, and it's also very useful for student uh, reflection and student self-assessment. Dave, would you be able to show a little bit about the portfolio? Yep, absolutely. So I'm I'm currently uh, I'm just going to share my screen and then you'll be able to see I'm actually so I'm in this D2L of Dave course and I'm impersonating a student uh, Bruce Banner and so you'll notice that there's no portfolio icon in the nav bar here but uh, if I select on my name and click on that name then this is how students would access their portfolio they would go to my portfolio and for every one of their classes, there's going to be a portfolio that's assigned to it. So I basically just have to uh, wait for the portfolios to load up. And for some reason, it's been taking, I think it's because I'm using not a real student, but it's been taking a, a minute or so for it to load up. But the different classes would load up here. So I may not actually be able to demo this at the moment. But uh Basically, what ends up happening is there's a, a class where you can upload, you can click on go in and then upload uh, from that student. And I think we had the yeah, so once you once you have things loaded into that portfolio, the teacher can then go in and uh, view those assign or those things that were added in. I'm not sure why it's not working. It might be because they're they're test students. But as a teacher, once a student has submitted to that portfolio, as a teacher, I can click on this portfolio link in the in the nav bar. And then what will happen is I'll have all the students that will show up inside here. Um, and I'll be able to view all their their portfolio submissions. This is again kind of embarrassing because I'm not sure why it's uh, why it's not loading up. Um, I'll have to take a look into that and see if there's any known issues. I wonder if I do it in a different browser if it'll work. Let me play around with that. But uh, yeah, so I guess I won't be able to show that. But uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, there's there's going to be some more supporting doc or some supporting videos that come. Up. Oh, there we go. Okay, so it just took a little bit for that to come up. So as a teacher, I can see the the different things that both both Bruce and Natasha have uh, have submitted in there. I'm just going to go in and I'll I'll add something as Bruce here. So I'll just add to portfolio, and you you have the option of uploading a file or going from your Office 365 or Google Drive. So in this sense, I'm just going to upload a document. So I'll upload the PDF file, but you can upload videos inside here. Uh, you can upload anything you'd like. And then when you click into this, this is where the, the student would have the ability to comment or reflect on their document that they've submitted or their video that they've uh, recorded of a performance or something like that. So this is the actual piece of work. Then below that, the student would be able to upload an audio file. And if they're using the, the Brightspace portfolio app that's available for Android or iOS, it actually prompts them to make a, an audio recording right there. Or they can then click upload an audio file. And if they have an MP4 or an MP3 that they want to upload, they can attach it here. Uh, Bruce can also type in his own reflection. So here's his thoughts on that, right? Um, you can see that right there. And then um, he can also categorize this work if there are certain categories that we've added in. So maybe there's going to be uh, certain things like um, written word, spoken word. I'm not sure. Um, 
But then as the teacher now, as the teacher, I can come over here and I can give comments on that portfolio entry. I can also attach a rubric or add expectations if I have expectations in that course. So if, if I've got expectations that I want to tag based on the performance or based on the, the piece of um, uh, that's been submitted, I can go in, tag the expectation, add it in, and then that's going to show up in the expectations progress because I can actually evaluate that inside here and say that you know he's working at a level three level on this expectation. Then there's also teacher only notes. So I can add a private note that only uh, myself are going to see. So as his teacher, I can say, you know, this, I don't know what I would actually say, but just note to myself. And I can make this so that's visible to his, uh, to other colleagues of this student, or if I keep it hidden, that's just for me. Okay. I can add that in and I can always go back and, uh, and either edit that or delete it as well. Okay, so that's basically the portfolio um, and you would have that available for every student that's in your class. Uh, in a class setting, it's a little bit different that you'd want uh, a way that you'd want to run it, but this is essentially how you can, uh, how you can use that. And um, you can set it up so that you either have to approve evidence for the students or not. Um, but yeah, it's, it's easy to use. Um, it is best to use from, uh, from the app itself because it prompts you to either take a picture or record a video not just upload a file but you can use this as a digital portfolio for for basically anything for performances for works uh for written works and uh, other things good good okay um i wanted to talk uh, we had a question about um how you could do think pair share and it kind of relates to uh, what we were planning for student conferencing so i just want to pull up that slide um, and talk a little bit. First, I want to talk about the think pair share because that's a, a common strategy that we use a lot. So if I wanted to do that in D2L, um, I might start by giving the students a question to think about um, and they could either be uh, writing their thoughts down on paper or typing them, whatever makes them feel more comfortable. So however they want to reflect on the question individually, uh, then when it's time to pair the students, um, there's two ways you could do that. You could have the students uh, pair uh, meet each other up with a uh, instant message chat inside D2L and they can just chat back and forth. They're, they're very comfortable doing that. The other way to do it is that you could create a partnered discussion. So you could create a discussion that includes the partners um, and then that would work if you had elbow partners or partners who were continuing to work together throughout the term, then you could set up a discussion and they could always be uh, going to that discussion every time they had to discuss things together. That could be a good strategy. So they're thinking, they're pair, pairing. And then when it's time to share, you can go back to virtual classroom um, and have students speak to the class, or you could set up a full class discussion where students uh, report their, uh, their findings that way. So that would be one way you could handle think, pair, share in the virtual learning environment. Um, and we also had a quick question, or sorry, yeah, let's talk about uh, conferencing. So. Um, there are different reasons we want to conference with students. Um, a lot of times it's to monitor understanding or to uh, arrive at an assessment or to, uh, there are many different reasons. Um, so if we, we are asynchronous, um, we have a number of different options. You can email students, um, you can instant message them, you can set up uh, a discussion. And again, it could be a discussion with just you and the student, or if you have a group working on a project, that group uh, will have, a discussion set up for them to communicate with each other and then the teacher could join that discussion and then you could talk to the students about their work in that way um, and within the discussions you have the advantage of video note which is really nice it's a nice way of being able to get a detailed comment into the students without uh, too much work on your part with the writing and also you get all your nonverbal cues in there with the video note so that can be really helpful when giving feedback um, if you want a conference with students uh, in a synchronous way virtual classroom um, is gonna be a good way. You set up a meeting with just that student um, and then you can uh, set up and uh, you can share your screen and camera. The student can share her screen and camera and you are all set to go. Um, another uh, similar kind of question was about uh, student presentations. So again, you have different reasons for having students present and different ways of doing it. Um, if you wanna have asynchronous presentations, you could do that through a discussion, uh, as we discussed before with the student and group restrictions, um, with video notes, 
Um, or if you want to have students present to the class, um, you could just set up a virtual classroom meeting for everybody and then uh, just have a student turn on their microphone um, and their camera and then they can give their presentation that way. Okay. Um, next, Dave, I thought it might be good to talk about uh, some of the, uh, how we can have students do some of the uh, things that we need them to do. Because I know in these subject areas, um it's not always students turning in a piece of writing or a word document they're producing different kinds of products we have music teachers here so how can students turn in um, an audio recording how can they record that um how can uh students turn in artwork online would you be able okay. to talk about that yeah that's actually a great question um so with that uh, based on based on the tools that we have available uh the the three ways i would suggest for for kind of, I guess, submitting work um, would be either through discussions, the assignment folder, or through the portfolio. So the portfolio app is very useful if you're wanting to record video uh, or audio and, and use it for reflections. But we can also do that in either discussions or assignments. So I'm, I'm gonna steal the, the presentership again and just, uh, just jump in to that and i'm going to uh i'm gonna impersonate my student bruce again here um and basically so the first one inside of discussions right so depending on how you want to set that up i know paul was paul you were just talking about how you could create discussion groups and if we created a, a discussion group of size one then every single student would be in their own discussion group that they would only be able to access with the teacher so they could talk back and forth. So if they needed to submit something to them, then they could jump into you know, this discussion, start a new thread and know that only the teacher and the student are going to see that, right? So if, uh, if my, let's say assignment is, is in here, um, then I can now go inside and I have this, this is a rich text editor. So I can go in and either insert an image. So if I have an image in here from my computer or from my phone, if I'm uploading it from there, then it's it's possible to do. I'm just gonna import the picture of Drake that I used from earlier. And I can, I'll say it's uh, alt text. Okay. And so you see, there's my image of Drake that I can upload. Um, and if I post that, then that's just going to show in as a discussion post, right? So my, my teacher can then see it and the teacher can also reply back and forth to that thread. If they're looking at uh, sub submitting something else, so say it's a video, uh, the idea of using video note would be useful. So going to insert stuff and then selecting video note, add video note in there. And then just the, uh, just the ability to either record a new webcam video for up to 30 minutes. So if you wanted to say, you know, okay, I'm gonna do a performance, I'm gonna start my recording, do the performance and then insert it. Or if you've already recorded that video, you can just select upload file, choose the file that you have as the video recording. So I don't know what these are. Um, let's do this one and I'll select next. I think this is the one that we used last time for the, uh, the coffee break with D2L. Um, I'm not going to give these a title, but you can, if you want to, and then if I insert that and post it, I got to give it a title. Okay. Then once that video has been uploaded and transformed into a viewable format, it'll show inside here. And that usually doesn't take too long depending on the video length. So it might take a couple minutes and maybe we'll come back to that. The, so that's the, the second way. The first way could be portfolio. The second way could be through discussions. If you have a student, um, a student or a group discussion folder, the other way would be through assignments. So if there are assignments that are already created inside Brightspace, so example, we have that the best gourd, um, what you can do is if you set up that assignment folder, then a student can go inside here, see the instructions from their teacher, see what's going on, okay, see how they're going to be assessed. And then when they get down to this spot here, they can either add a file, which would be, they can add the video file if they have a recording or a picture of their artwork, or they can add that directly inside here. Now, right now, this record audio button, 
I want to try it out because right now I think it's trying to use Flash. But what I've uh, what I've actually just learned from the ministry uh, just this morning, actually, uh, I was on a web conference with them, is that this is going to be changed to an HTML5 uh, audio recorder. And so I just have to go in and change a couple little things and I should be able to have that up and running by this afternoon. So when they go record audio, it should allow them to just record an audio file right there. Um, and then they can submit through this submit button. So once they've added a file or recorded their audio, they can uh, they can submit that in there. Okay, so but that as a teacher, you'd be required to go in and create this assignment folder, which we covered in our, uh, I think our fourth session on assessment. Okay, so there's, I would suggest those three ways, portfolio, uh, uh, an individual student discussion folder, or an assignment folder. Okay, Dave, if you want to click over to slide 12. Uh, we have a question about uh, live writing. Someone wanted to know how we would handle live writing online. Um, okay. And, and we kind of had that question in our minds as well. Um, so how do we model the writing process in a virtual learning environment? Um, it can be done. Um, and you want to show, uh, and again, as we model writing, we want to show students the messy process of coming up with ideas and changing our minds and then uh, writing something and crossing it out and realizing that this piece doesn't fit and adding something else. Um, often we only show students our final products um, and then uh, they don't, they have a hard time connecting the dots between the final product um, and the blank pages that they're staring at to begin with. So modeling the, the messy process that we go through can be really helpful. Um, so there are ways that we can do that. Um, the easiest one is in virtual classroom, uh, the synchronous way. So if you've got the full class and you're having a full class discussion and you want to model, this is a part of your lesson where you're modeling the skill. Um, you can have them all watching while you write a piece. Um, you could do that uh, just by pulling up Microsoft Word and starting to type if that's your process. Um, if you do prefer to write by hand, that can be done. You'll have to invest in a document camera, um, but you can uh, email Dave or I and we can give you some recommendations for affordable options. And then you can have a camera that shows kind of your handwriting on the page if that's uh, going to be something that's going to help you get your way of writing across and help the students understand uh, your way. Um, if you're doing it in an asynchronous way, um, you could also do a screencast with virtual classroom and then you could just record that um, and then have the students watch it um, at another place. You could also have a Brightspace capture um, and that's uh, if you're using Microsoft Word or a, a word processor and you're typing that way. Um, and video note would be another way. Um, it would be um, as long as you're able to show the page that you're writing. So um, there are ways to do either typing or document camera uh, modeling the writing process. Okay. Um, next, um, I th we're almost out of time. I know it's one seventeen. We started a little bit late, um, but it might be nice to talk a little bit about how a ticket out the door could be done in Desire to Learn. What do you think, Dave? Well, I mean, so we can use. So there is a survey tool that you can use inside of Brightspace. Um, and it can be used, it really depends on how you're trying to, to run your course. So you can do surveys or polls directly inside of the virtual learning environment or in, inside virtual classroom, right? So I know if you've been to any of our other sessions, we've always done polls at the beginning or those, um, those multi-user mode questions. So that's one way that you could do that. Um, so I'm just going to very quickly, there, there's going to be a video that comes out showing the different tools you can use within virtual classroom. But if you would uh, if you don't mind, just uh, I'm going to ask, what's your favorite letter Okay, out of the first four? Choose one at the top. You've got those polling options. So A, B, C, or D, what's your favorite letter? Um, no one's going with D. Okay, there we go. We got some Ds there. You can't see the results yet. You're probably just seeing your results, but I see all the results right now. And when I close that poll and publish the results, now you can see everything down there, right? So if you had a meaningful question that you wanted to ask, you could easily pull your class right inside here while you're doing it live, 
or you could use the, the survey tool inside of Brightspace. So I'm gonna share my screen again, just to show how you can use that. I've gotta stop impersonating my student. So inside this course admin, again, there's a lot of things that you can explore here. So when you go into course admin, there's a lot of different tools and I don't want this to be overwhelming, which is why I don't point out every single one of these. But down here under assessment, there's a bunch of these icons and one is called surveys. So a survey is actually very similar to a multiple choice question, but I can just go through, create a survey. And as I'm going through, Basically, I can give feedback to students. The results can be made anonymous. Um, but when I create a survey question, I have to give it a name first. So survey one, and I'll add or edit these questions. I'll show you the types of questions you can add. It's very similar to a quiz. So again, you've got true, false, multiple choice, all these different types inside here. So this would be a great way of getting feedback from your class if you just wanted to see, okay, did they really get what I was asking them? Right, so if you were here for our assessment one, uh, we went through the quiz tool a little bit, but it basically uses the exact same type of question styles. Um, and you, when you're creating it, it'll preview the questions inside on the, uh, on the right side here. I'm not gonna actually create a survey um, just because for lack of time, but you can use surveys. And the only difference between a survey and a quiz is that quizzes are graded and surveys are not. Surveys, you're able to, uh, you're able to see what students say on some some type of question. You can use written response or uh, or the multiple choice style to check and see if they're they're understanding something. Or maybe it's even something like you want to know. Okay, we're going to be studying a novel. Re uh, we're going to be studying some type of a novel. What are your suggestions? Like, what type of things do you want to cover? Um, and get them into it. But so survey is one tool you can use. Polling is another tool you can use in the live sessions. Um, Paul, do you have any other ideas for uh, for how you could do ticket out the doors? Or no, I, think, I think you've got it. I think you got it. Awesome. Cool. Okay. So is there anything else that we either forgot to cover, didn't cover? Um, I was just looking at the chat, and I think that we've addressed all of the questions that people had, um, and we are at time, so if people um, are finished, that's great, but if there are more questions, uh, please type them in, and, and we'll see what we can do. And one other thing to, to just share right now is um, we fully know that uh, that this isn't going to solve every single one of your needs and answer every one of your questions right now. Um, it would be difficult to, to teach, a, to, to host 45 minutes of PD um, and get everyone to be a stellar online English or arts teacher. Uh, but this is more just to kind of promote conversations and awareness of what can be done inside here. So um, this is, it's again, it's just trying to start the conversation to be uh, trying to start a conversation around what things you could do and get some English teachers involved uh, in the conversation. So I, I see uh, Jillian said, could you connect or link a Microsoft form? Uh, you can, but what you'd have to do is provide that link either in the chat or uh, or somewhere else. So absolutely, if you have Microsoft Forms enabled uh, and you want to create something in there, you can put the link in. We've often done that with either you know posting a, a feedback form uh, or you know just posting in a um, posting something into the chat. So definitely possible to do. So any other questions? Okay, good question. So Yul's asking, um, are these survey questions and polls set up in advance so students can access asynchronously or are they only available real time? If you're using the Brightspace surveys tool, that can be done asynchronously. However, if you're using the poll tool inside the virtual classroom, that's only done uh, synchronously. So uh, if I do a poll right now, only people who are in the virtual classroom session will be able to access that poll. However, if you want to do it asynchronously, you can create those poll or the, the surveys inside of Brightspace and then, um, and then share them with your class. I guess that's one thing I didn't necessarily show. So maybe I'll show it right now, Paul. Sure. Um, 
So once I've created the survey, right? So I, I think I have the survey, it's saved. It might not be a good survey, but once I've created the survey, okay, I'm gonna make it visible so that users can see it. Um, if I want my students to go to that survey, there's a few different ways I can do that. We can create something in content or basically go anywhere where I can post something to my class. So I'll go into announcements and uh, I'm just gonna edit this announcement that I have here. It's a test announcement that someone created. But there's wherever we have something where we can type, we have the option of inserting stuff, inserting images and inserting quick links. So inserting stuff is going to be stuff that exists outside of Brightspace. So you can see things like, oh, uh, files on my computer, or uh, I can create and add a video note, or I can add in a capture video or a link going outside somewhere. But this insert quick link accesses everything that lives inside of Brightspace. So I just created a survey. I should be able to scroll down to here and find all of my surveys. There we go. So there's survey and then survey number one, and it provides me a link directly there. So if I now update that announcement, this link, when I go back to the main page, that link to survey one is going to, is going to work as a link. So if a student comes in and clicks on survey one, they're gonna be brought to that quick link. Okay, and I can also copy this, and I believe I can paste it inside of, oh uh, no, I can't paste it inside of the, uh, the chat in here. I'd have to copy the, copy the wrong thing. So if I copy the link address, I can paste that in. And if you click on that now, you'll be brought directly to that survey, right? So that's essentially what that link does. And because you're a teacher, you'd be brought into the actual editing of that survey, but it, it's more than possible to, to make a survey beforehand and then share it out with your class. I know that was probably a winded response on that, but oh well. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, any other questions that you'd have for, for Paul, myself, or uh, even just any, any thoughts that you have about how you could use, um, how you could use Brightspace for your English classroom, the limitations you might have? Like, where do you see yourself going at this point? I know it's, it's 1.30. We've, uh, we've gone over. But uh, if you want to keep the conversation going for a short time, it would be more than welcome to stay. Otherwise, um, I guess, thank you for, for coming out um, to D2L with Dave. And I'm gonna go to uh, the slide number one because that one has, and Paul. Um, so thank you for, for attending our session. Uh, again, if you have questions regarding how to do things in Brightspace, please let me know and I can help you out one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Or if you have a group of teachers that uh, share common interests, um, I can always help you out in a group. Paul is great for um, his ideas in terms of the English classroom as well. And he's got some great experience with uh, teaching e-learning in the Writer's Craft course. So please lean on us as, uh, as resources. Um, we're more than happy to help. And um, I think there was one question. Uh, Shauna wants to know if you're gonna be available next year for help setting up uh, next year's classes. Yeah, absolutely. So when whenever you're ready to get started, um, what we can do is create sandbox courses for you. So if you want a course that you can start playing around in, creating things, um, and then when your course actually gets created, I think they get created uh, about two weeks into August, but we're gonna have to wait on, um, on everything with Aspen to get changed over from Trevlac. So once those courses are created in Brightspace, you're, you'll be able to copy over content from a sandbox course that you've been working in. So if if you want a sandbox course, just let me know. I'll, I'll make one for you. And then uh, you can work in there. I can help you with whatever else you need. So absolutely. And I'm, I'm in this position as far as I know uh, up until next year. So uh, provided something crazy doesn't happen with staffing, Let's cross our fingers. Um, but yeah, I'll be here to support uh, everyone for at least the next year. Okay. All right, thank you, everybody.
All right. Thank you too, Paul. I appreciate your help and expertise in this matter. And uh, if you're wondering, there will be more subject specific sessions to follow. I have a feeling I'm going to have to send out a brand new file that has proper links. <laughs> so hopefully that doesn't happen again. Um, but yeah, thanks for joining. Thank you, Paul. And uh, yeah, as always, we will see you virtually next time. Have a good day, everybody.